Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to another episode of the program, Muslims in America. The religion of Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and the majority of that growth is taking place right here in the United States of America. According to most reliable estimates, there are more than 7 million Muslims living in America. Muslims have become valuable and vital assets to the American society. So please join me as I travel around the United States of America and introduce you, my viewers, to a few of the many Muslims in America. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the program Muslims in America. Alhamdulillah our travels have brought us here to Brooklyn, New York which is a borough of New York City and we've come to uh, Masjid Taqwa which was here in the Bedford-Stuyvesant area of Brooklyn. This Masjid was established quite a few years ago and has a very unique story of how they cleaned up the crime and drug activity in this community. So stay with us and join us for this episode of Muslims in America. And alhamdulillah, as we traveled around America, we found that a lot of people have done a lot for Islam. And alhamdulillah, we are here with one of them who has been working actively in the dawah and spreading the correct understanding for Islam for a long time here in Brooklyn and around the country and around the world. Imam Siraj Wahad, salamu alaikum. And again, I want to thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us because it's very important we meet the workers in the dawah for Islam in America. I want to start with a correction. Okay. Um, Brooklyn not on the outside of New York. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn is in New York. Okay. It's part of New York. Okay. Uh, but I can understand why you're saying that because Brooklyn is so large mm -hmm. that if it were a separate city by itself, mm -hmm. it would be the fourth largest city in America. Alhamdulillah, this program is about Muslims in America and my viewers all for his like to hear from the interviewee a bit about themselves and how they came to Islam. <laughs> I came in Islam, I, I consider it, some people don't like this, but I consider it coming from the back door. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that, I, I joined uh, a group called the Nation of Islam in 1969. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though they weren't what one would call Orthodox Islam, mm -hmm. um, but it was my introduction to Islam. And what drew you to them? Yeah. What drew me to, to, to the Nation of Islam wasn't the message of Islam, wasn't the message of the Quran or the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I really didn't know that. But what drew me to the Nation of Islam was its... Uh, Social, social justice mess message. It was black people doing it for self. Mm -hmm. uh, the leader of this movement, as you know, a man called Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. attracted people like um, Malcolm X, Al Haj Malik Shabazz, people like uh, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. and, and so forth and so on. So 1969 was a height of black awareness. So as a, as a student at New York University, I was attracted to the message of the, of the strength of the black family. Uh, for instance, um, a black man taking care of his family, mm -hmm. those kinds of social messages. And that was the thing that attracted me to the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. In 1975, when the leader, Elijah Muhammad, died, then um, his son, Imam Walafadi Muhammad, mm -hmm. began to point us toward the direction of Orthodox Islam, mm -hmm. which is now um, became really beloved to me to, to, to learn about Allah himself mm -hmm. and to learn about the great messenger, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, his, his companions. And so, um, so again, 
coming into this group who call themselves Muslims. Mm -hmm. um, um, some of the uh, social aspects of social justice was in that group, but mm -hmm. not the orthodox mm -hmm. understanding of Islam. But let me ask you, the people who remain with that group today, would they be considered the majority or small minority of the Muslims in America? Yeah, very small minority. Um, if you would ask how many people in the present day Nation of Islam headed by Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, you would get um, different estimates. The highest number would be 50,000. But when you talk about Muslims in America, it can, it, the, the numbers can range between 6 million, some say 8 million, or as many as 9 million Muslims. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the, the differences, the differences between night and day. Now, uh, something unique happened recently. I think that uh, Minister Farrakhan, he asked you to speak at their Savior's Day. So I want to ask you a bit Not about... just speak at the Savior's Day. Okay. That, that would be one thing. Okay. But to give the Juma prayer mm -hmm. at Savior's Day, which mm -hmm. is another thing. Right. And the interesting thing about that, and the reason, and I don't know if you probably want to ask me a question, but the reason I'm saying that while it's on my mind is that we feel um, like Malcolm before and Haj Malik Shabazz who changed toward Orthodox Islam, like Imam Muhammad, Walter B. Muhammad, who took his community from the doctrine of the Nation of Islam to Orthodox Islam. We feel that Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is moving on that same direction. The Hence, now. they had Juma prayer service during their annual um, Savior Day convention. <laughs> And um, Imam Minister Farrakhan asked me to lead the Juma prayer service, mm -hmm. which is which is which is very significant because again, in the days of the Nation of Islam, they never had Juma prayer service. Mm -hmm. So the very fact that they have a Juma prayer service is mm -hmm. a very very good sign right. toward the orthodoxy of the um, ongoing orthodoxy of the Nation of Islam. I'll give another example, primary example, in the days of the Nation of Islam, um, we fasted in the month of, of December. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike.